thank you for being here. I want to extend a huge thank you to um, people that have joined the coffee club and donated Janice recently, Margaret and Christine, and we had a whole bunch of other people that we put in the newsletter. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this really does help with the hosting and uh, making sure we have what we need, et cetera. So I really just want to say thank you. All right. Well, let's get going to our page. And like I said, thank you again for your patience as I tried to fix all that stuff. Sometimes it just doesn't work and we have to move on. Keep moving forward. All right. This one I picked, the irises, because a lot of times people are like, my sketches don't look that good, or I don't know, I don't like the way this is looking. But if you just look at what Van Gogh did, he's just getting ideas down. So don't be too hard on yourself when you're working, especially um, if you're tired or you just don't feel like doing anything. Things can just be loose. Things can be free. These are irises. I just love the circular mark makings. Love, love, love. All right, the next page is one of my favorite works that he has done. I love it so much. It is my uh, iPhone cover. I think one, uh, is it Casetify or Casely has like a Van Gogh collection. And so I bought that as um, my um, case and I just love it. Every time I look at it, it makes me smile. For one, one of the things I love about it is his use of like just the blue, right? He didn't have to make it so complicated. He just used a few colors and made it work. I love the brown. I love the gray. I mean, it is just great. So this is going to be what we'll be using for a warm up. So take out your sketchbook or your page that you'll be working on. And we will get started. So what are you gonna use? What are you gonna use that you haven't used in a while? I am gonna try using these pens. They are Pentel brush sign pens, or you could use pastels. You could use whatever you have. Maybe we'll use color pencils too. Just anything blue or you don't have to use blue. You can of course use whatever color you want. Okay, so Jessica is gonna use Chunky markers today. Awesome. Great. So chunky markers, if you have charcoal, I think that's what I did last time. It left the mess in my book, but it's okay. See how it like has the other side. Susan says watercolor pencils. Great. I love using things you haven't used for a while. So get that out and then let's try it. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And we're not going to paint the whole thing unless you want to. And I didn't even realize until I read the description of this particular painting that there's an actual woman in this picture. <laughs> Do you see that? I didn't even see her. She's so, she's like hidden in all of the amazing brushwork. So anyway, what I love about this painting also is those little dots. I love the dots. I love the curly lines. I love the movement. So we're going to try that and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to use my pencil and no, that's my brush pen. And I'm going to start with the roof line, I think. And this Pentel pen, it's cool because you can press it and it gets thick, see? And then if you want to, it could do fine lines also, right? Drawing the, we're just warming up. All right. And then there's these awesome marks. Just keep your, um, like, where's Walter ha or whatever is. Oh, yeah. Jan, Jan is like, where's Waldo, right? Um, I am going to use my, uh, let's see here. Use my pen and let me see if it okay I'm going to hold it kind of far away because it helps with the looseness all right and then I'm just going to add some weird trees here 
and we're not trying to be Van Gogh. We're just trying to like emulate his mark making, maybe use it to influence how we're doing things. And then you could go through later on and be like, I like how I made those lines on my next art piece. I'm going to do the same. Um, these are cypress trees, I think. Oh, no, vineyard. The vineyard. I just, the energy. I think that's what it is. It's the energy of his work and that he's not that concerned with making it look perfect. Um, you know how much I love to make things not perfect. <laughs> just to be very easy on yourself. One of the things that we were talking about the last time is um, developing your hand. Just like when you're a child, you started, when you started writing, your writing is not the same as it is now, right? So you develop your hand as you go on. And a lot of times you just have to practice. I'm just kind of like not even exactly copying. I'm, I switched to color pencil. I'm just really um, picking and choosing a few things here to make marks with. Picking and choosing. Now, I really wanted to do flowers um, for our main painting. So we're going to be doing that. But this one, I couldn't resist sharing it with you because I just absolutely love this painting. I'm just kind of moving down, just jumping everywhere. I'm going to try to stick to the blue theme. Let's see, where, what do I have? Maybe I'll use my old pastels. Why not? Oh, there you go. Already super bright or super brushy. These Pentel ones are great. Okay. Am I scared to draw the lady? I think I'm a little bit scared to draw the lady. <laughs> I'm gonna try her anyway. See, sometimes you just get nervous, or I do anyway. But you get, you just gotta go for it. You know what I want to do is like, I used to do this all the time before I had kids. I can sit down and kind of go to a park and people watch, you know, and then try to draw them. I haven't done that in a while. I also love her shoes. They're just kind of sticking out. Okay. Oh, dog is about to bark. Hang on, I'm just going to mute this for a second. I think, sir, visitor. Okay, not sure. Okay. And. Just more lines moving around. It looks like it would be, you know, like, how does he do this? How does he add all these lines? How does he make it so fluid? That's that's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm looking towards trying to do with my work. Just how to be loose, how to be free. It's very easy to get stuck, you know, doing the same thing over and over. For some reason, my, my hand just wants to do these lines. I don't know why my hand just wants to do it. Just adding some more dark marks up here. Okay, I'm gonna give us another couple minutes. Maybe one more minute. And then we'll check on your progress. Here's the tree. Have you ever been scared to tackle a subject? Um, if you have, what is it? What is it that's like making you kind of like, oh, I don't know if I could paint that. Sometimes I feel that way about portraits. I don't know if I can do it. People and faces. Okay, yeah, Sylvia, the same. Um, I always try to do, <laughs> I 
I just do like the contour face like all the time so that if it look it doesn't look like me or if it doesn't look like the person I'm trying to draw it's okay I'm like oh it's just a contour not to worry um but I want to tackle that in in the future I want to um I picked the wrong pastel by the way here the wrong color but that's okay um I want to branch into people and faces. Um, there's some places that do, um, some sites that do free photos, reference photos for faces. I just haven't had a chance to dive deep into that, but yeah. I started a face sketchbook and I think I got like, um I got maybe three pages I was trying to do a face a day three pages and then I was just like yikes yikes I did not continue unfortunately I should have though Virginie says your marks make me think of Basquiat thank you Virginie I hope I say that correctly but um he his marks are really energetic like I feel like it takes so long to learn how to make to be loose like that I know I'm kind of loose with my work but I feel like I need more looseness all right so this is where I'm stopping for now um I'm going to remove my pin please show me what you've made if you would like all right so it's the fall feeling so that's why it made me think of these flowers they're so dark and moody okay so we're ready I'm going to start off with some um, color pencil just for mark making so that I can see what I'm doing. Actually, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use these markers. They're the Pentel, they're Pentel color pens, fine point, but I don't even mind that um, they are going to, you know, show in my work. But I'm just going to be really fast. Think of yourself as a bug, just like jumping around. I'm starting with this flower right here. And I'm just doing a circle. And then there's a nut. Oh, it looks like a donut. Am I hungry right now? I might be hungry right now. There's a flower here. Here's this yellow one right here. And I'm just, you know, jumping around. Doing lines here, adding, I might end up using the whole page and not even getting to the vase. But for homework, if you want to do the vase, that's fine. I would love to see that actually. Zinnias and geraniums is his painting here. Drawing a vase to remind myself where it is. It's interesting because a lot of painters, when they're painting, they say, follow the rule of threes, you know, like the rule of thirds. But I feel like here he put his vase like smack dab in the middle, which I love. And then, um, but I'm trying to work on my composition though, because I don't always want to put it in the middle, but sometimes I do it. Okay, just very loose and we have some flowers here. You don't even have to draw them all. I just like to give myself a little map. And then I'm gonna use watercolor and then I'm gonna use oil pastel. So as you can see, I'm not gonna be able to fit all of them in here because I started too largely, but that's okay. There's too many flowers. It's like, what do I include? What do we add? What do we add? I'm gonna stop right there. All right, so that is my map that will tell me what to do and where to go. All right, now I'm gonna take my round brush. I think I'm gonna use this bigger brush it is a number 14. Normally I like to use a round eight 
but I have been trying to branch out. Okay, just going to grab some colors here. I think I'm going to start with this orangey red. And I am keeping my brush kind of far. And these are just going to be Van Gogh inspired. So they don't, my geraniums are not going to look exactly like Van Gogh's. I'm just having fun, like, um, trying to make it look like maybe how a child might make it, uh, trying to find that inner, inner playfulness because that's very hard to get back. So it's good to have music on because then you don't think about it too much. You just keep going when you're painting maybe. Last time, I think it was last time when we were painting together, a lot of you um, gave me recommendations for new bands to try. We will have to make that list in the Facebook page because I would love to hear, because I just, I lost the, um, I lost the chat for that. It didn't record. So I just want to make sure that I, some of you were saying some amazing bands that I would love to just you know, learn from and try. Cause I feel like I'm listening to the same music over and over again. So having new music would be great. Okay, where's this yellow? I think it's right here. There's a lot of geraniums or is this the zinnia? Which one do you think? Okay. I love that it's so moody. There's a blue flower right here. All of my colors are just like really trying hard to dance together. They're trying to dance. And it could be my, uh, you know, those that phase when you're painting and it's like, ugh. I might be I might be having that phase right now. <laughs> I'm in the uh phase. When you're in that phase, I have found that just keep going. Don't give up. Just keep going. Keep moving forward. And then it kind of resolves itself as um things are working. All right, super white flowers here, but their middles are red. We got some really red flowers here. I'm just map mapping them out. I'm really liking how just really loose and kind of weird this painting is. <laughs> um, Sandra said, next time I won't use water soluble markers. Yeah, that's what I did in their dancing too much on my page they're like bleeding but that's okay you can redo it if you want I'm kind of letting it be just to see um what happens uh I'm just gonna keep working with it but I hear you because as I'm doing this there, I'm getting like bleeding everywhere my colors are dancing too much Dancing, dancing. All right. Adding some yellow. I think, I think I, um, I'm just going to make this one up. It's not on the page because I think I, as a bug, I flew to a different spot. <laughs> so... Okay. So 
as you can see, I'm just smushing paint down, not really even worrying too much about how it's going to turn out because you can redo it again if you wish, which I probably will later. If you have like um, mixed media, like the tone tan page, sometimes that's fun to use for Van Gogh work. I, I have been finding myself doing that a lot, using tone tan. Now the background is really dark, but there's some reddish. So I'm going to just remind myself that there's dark ground. It's not totally black. There's like greenish in it. So trying to add that. And then definitely the actual base is green to me. And that could just be my printer. Um, that's what I use for the warm up tan paper and brown ink. Oh, Jessica, I'd love to see that. Um, that's cool. If you're on the Facebook page or tag me on Instagram, um, so that I can see how that turned out. Okay, so that's my first uh, attempt and it looks crazy, but that's okay. I am now gonna add pastel. The cool thing about pastel is it'll just go on top of anything, even when it's wet. And then they make kind of like a little bit of a resist. Is your desk starting to, ooh, look at that. Can you see that? For some reason, this camera, oops, I just broke it. Um, the yellows are really washing out and I'm not sure why. I don't know if that's Zoom doing that. Ooh. Just going through with the oil pastel and making marks. I really like how that's looking. Put a red in the middle. And then this one is kind of orangish red. So just trying to be like, channel my inner Van Gogh. And, um, make those marks like we were making earlier. Now, a long time ago, we, when the first few painting with joys, I gave the homework of coming up with your um, artist family tree. I don't know if any of you were here when we did that, but the premise is you can't really pick your family, right? You're kind of born where you're born, but you can pick your adopted artist family. So for example, Van Gogh could be an uncle. He could be your grandfather. He could be whatever you want. Like in my family tree, I have Matisse. I have Van Gogh. I have, I threw in as a, an uncle Wolf Kahn. Like just think about your family tree and like, all these people, all these traits from your different family, your artist family tree can, can follow you, can be in your hand while you're painting. Um, so think about that this week. Who would you put in your artist family tree? Any, any thoughts on that? Does anybody have any that you think you might want to share? Um, I'm trying to look at my... Uh, Deben corn for sure. Oh, Jessica says Georgia O'Keeffe. Yeah, that's great. So your artist family tree, just think about it. What about Georgia O'Keeffe that you love, um, Jessica? So uh, next time, let's have that discussion because I, I love to learn. It actually also helps uh, me find new artists that um, I may have forgotten about. I am making a mess, <laughs> but I also don't mind. I'm just really having a good time. 
I hope you are too. This is my interpretive Van Gogh piece. Where everything's kind of just messy. You remember he has those undulating lines, so you can add that. Okay, Fran says Diebenkorn, Fairfield Porter, Lois Dodd, Hilma of Clint. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look up Lois Dodd. That's a good one. Frida Kyle, Kahlo and O'Keefe for Cindy. Yeah, definitely be thinking about that because like I said, you can't really, you, you are, with your family, you don't you didn't really choose them, but when it comes to your art family, you can pick whoever you want. And if they're still alive, you could say, you know, you can if you ever go see them or something as an exhibition. I mean, I guess it would be weird to say, hey, I adopted you as my uncle, but <laughs> Or not, I don't know. <laughs> they might just be like, what? What'd you say? But yeah, I like to think about, like, it's so funny because I, I will tell this to my kids all the time. Like, oh my goodness, guys, I just I just added to my family tree. And they're like, what are you talking about, mom? Because then I'll say, oh, this new artist. He is now such an inspiration. There's another artist um, called, I think his name is John Walker, and his art is just giant and amazing. And so he he has made himself part of my family tree. He doesn't even know but he is. Okay, Emily Carr, Norville Robinson. Wow, I'm gonna have to, thank you, Margaret. I'm gonna have to like make a list. I'm gonna capture the chat and make a list because I am seeing people that I don't know about. You guys are introducing me to some new and amazing people. Is yours starting to come together? Mine, I'm just really enjoying making these like line marks. Maybe I had a long Wednesday today or something that it feels good to just make marks that don't make sense hazel zone thank you mary i'll have to look hazel up these are white so i'm just gonna add that and then around them is green so i'm gonna also do that there's really dark color and then green Elsworth Kelly. Oh my goodness. Donna, thank you. Yeah, be thinking about who to add. To your tree. The oil pastel just goes right on top of the watercolor so smoothly. And this red with the greens making a weird, like a weird color together that I like a lot. So I'm just going to leave that. I love how it's turning out with the different marks here. It's still super loose and crazy, but I like it. Maybe if I zoom out a little, that might help. Okay, so how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing okay. I'm just adding a few more little bits. I'm leaving it, like I said, kind of wild. I like it. But if you want to redo yours later on, you can. Of course, if you have time. I'm using the pastel, um, the Pentel ones for the line work, and then I'm kind of jumping back and forth and using the gallery ones for 
like the buttery, buttery marks. Whoops, dropping things. Okay, so here, I think I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna add the background now. And then I'll come back and add more here. But yeah, Van Gogh, I was telling the um, session last time, I was mentioning how there's a book at the library about him and his brother Theo and about their life. Um, it's fiction, but every time I listen to his story, it just makes me kind of sad, you know? Um, about his life and how it was very hard for him to, like people didn't appreciate his work and that was just a bummer. Um, Sandy just put something in the link there, Fred Oldfield. I love how he was able to bring so much light and life into his Western themed paintings. Ooh, and she even put the link. I'm gonna capture some of these um, names right now, and then I will make sure to share that with everybody um, later on. Okay, I'm gonna do the background. Get my darkest dark brown, I think. And do the background. And then you can always like go back with a uh, oil pastel. Um, and add more, um, details. Right now I'm just getting a first wash through. Oh, Dominique says... Donna says, Arthur Dove, and then Dominique says, you should read Let Me Tell You About a Man I Know by Anne Pratchett about Van Gogh in the Asylum. <gasps> okay, I will. Anne Pratchett is a great writer. I will definitely look for that at my library. When I was growing up in the Philippines, um, maybe it's different now, but they didn't have public libraries. And um, I was actually talking to a friend and I can't remember where she is in Europe, but she said that for her to go to the library, you had to pay like a, um, a membership fee to go to the library. Isn't that interesting? I've never heard of that before. Um, but the libraries here in where I live in New York, and probably some of you there in America, it's free. But um, I just love getting books from the library. I didn't know I was in my um, in my fifth grade class or sixth grade actually. I didn't really learn how to speak English until I was like in sixth grade and um i started my first books that when i understood um what i was reading was little house on the prairie and so i was just like whoa i am actually understanding what the story is about and so i would stay in my uh poor teacher's room after hours for so long and she was just trying to go home and I didn't want to leave because I was just like I have to know what happened to Laura Ingalls and um, she's like Joy there is a thing called a public library and I'm like what what is a public library and so she introduced me to the library and now I am I am stuck I'm there all the time I my mom I had my mom take me every week and I would go with a stack of books. It just blew my mind that books are free. You could take them home for two weeks. You don't have to give them back. I mean, like the whole concept was so amazing to me that I almost like hugged the librarian when she gave me my library, my first library card. I was just like, 
Oh my goodness. I can take, are you sure I can take these books home? I kept asking if it was okay. <laughs> and she's like, yes, take it home with you. Um, so I have tried to instill the same love for the library in my children. Okay, so that is my first crazy pass at this painting. <laughs> it makes, it reminds me of fall. You know what I mean? Like the, the colors are really fall vibes to me. Uh, it needs work, but I love adding the background. Um, Dominique says it's free in France too. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where... Um, she was that she said it was um it was not free like she had to it's almost like a ymca or like a subscription based place and i was just like wow that's interesting because i said you know you could just get it at your library and she's like oh i have to pay for the library here Has anybody has anybody been to that um exhibit of um the exhibit of Van Gogh where it's like you sit there and it's like an immersive experience? I have not been, but I heard that it was some people say it was amazing. Okay, so Cindy says my rule for the library is I can only take as many as I can carry. No land biscuits or wagons. <laughs> What about the grocery bags? Those reusable bags that are gigantic? I that's what I bring. We bring like three. Dominique says, yes, it's fantastic. Ah, that might be my gift for myself one of these days. I just want to sit down in the museum, like the Van Gogh one, the immersive experience one, and just see how that is. Because people were saying to me that they really enjoyed it. So uh, Mary has been. I did go to the Van Gogh Immersive exhibit. It was so cool. Um, I don't know if they have it here where I am. I have to check. Cindy, I love libraries so much. Yes, I've been to the Immersive. And yes, bags are fine, right? Wagons, though. I never thought about that. Maybe next time. It's so funny because um, I work at a public library. And... Um, I have like, don't tell them this, but I have 54 books out right now. And um, <laughs> and then I also belong to another library um, where I live. And um, I think we have 25 from there. So we don't even need books in our house because our whole house is a giant library. <laughs> it's in my house. But um, I think before you go, you should smoke a doobie or drink some wine or something. I don't do any of that anymore, but it would be better. Oh, oh, you mean not to the library, but you mean to the immersive, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm like to the library. That seems normal nowadays. Ah, okay. So Cindy says, yes, immersive. Jessica works at the public library too in an art museum. Jessica, you're living the dream. Oh my gosh. Donna says his immersive experience show is a must-see. Went last year and stayed all day. How is it with children though? I have two teenage boys. Do you think they will enjoy it? That's the question. Because I would like to enjoy it myself. But if they're like, mom, are we done? Mom, are you ready to go? That kind of like, I might have to drop them off at their um, grandmother's house, maybe. And then I just go. They have a little drawing studio on set. Oh, okay, there you go. The kids can do art. Thank you, Mary. Okay, I'm going to stop messing with this one, but I want to keep going because it's just fun to see where it will lead me. But this is where I'm stopping for now. Um... Okay, so mine's still wet over here. I'm just gonna turn it around. Um, okay, so kids are spellbound. People are saying try to do the Oculus. Oh, is it? It's the only five dollars. All right. Um, Sandy says y'all are doing fantastic. So much beauty. I agree, Sandy. It looks so good. Anne says I went to the immersive Van Gogh and it was amazing. 
In the biggest room, it was a moving constant show of his paintings and on walls and on floors. Kids would love it. All right, so um, would they, do I need to bring my own chair? I guess this is the next question. Those of you that have gone. Um, or do I use their chairs? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm gonna, mine is super wet, so I'm gonna get a different piece of paper. So you get yourself situated and then we'll do the next little painting. We'll start it. I'm going to use this little brown paper. They have benches in the big room and Cindy said they have a few benches. Okay, that's good to know. And in the art room, okay. I just didn't know if I should be bringing my own stuff because some people said that they brought chairs. Do we bring blankets? Some people sat on the floor. Okay, great. What if you are motion sick a lot? Would the Oculus make me motion sick? See, I'm I'm glad that you guys are answering all these questions for me already. I'll be prepared. Okay, so here is our next painting. Um, no problem with motion sickness. <sighs> okay, now I know what I'm gonna do for my birthday. Um, I'm gonna save up for it so that next year I'm just gonna go. There we go. I'll I'll get a giant bottle of red wine, drink the whole thing <laughs> before I go in there. Yes, same. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna try to do. We're gonna try to do this in the spirit of Van Gogh. So, I would say, take out that one that has a lot of lines and just kind of put it to the side so you can see it and then have your reference photo right there. Sometimes I have to do that where I have to keep an eye on both. So we're gonna try to um, move and do the flowers like he did. And first I'm gonna draw a little map, but this time like, um, who was it? I can't remember who it was. I think, is it Jennifer? The one that said that don't use the water soluble marker. I'm going to try not to use water soluble marker this time. I am going to use, um, what is this called? Uh, Prismacolor. So I'm just going to map things out like we did before. Ooh, can't even see it. I'm going to use a different color so you all could see it. Can you see that? Nope. I will use red. There we go. Okay, this is for the blue flower. <laughs> Using red for the blue flower, I'm just gonna make marks so I know where to put it. And then adding this beautiful flower that's kind of looking towards the light right here in the corner. And said that people sit on the floor, a few benches, it may make you dizzy at first, but be prepared for movement all around you. Okay. Be prepared for movement everywhere. It sounds so exciting. I see it all the time advertised. And then I'm like, to my family, anybody want to come with me? And then everybody's like, baseball. My boys are really into baseball. So whenever we go, we end up going to baseball things. I'm just adding some more flowers here. If you wanted to add this like really pretty energetic bloom, I don't know what kind of flower that is. Does anybody know? This, um, I don't know how to describe it. Is it hairy? It's like, a, oops. It's, I think I'm going to go ahead, ah, uh, Portia. Did I say that right? The Portia mum. Okay. There's a lot of different, there are a lot of different ones here. There's roses. I'm just going to do dots. Ooh, remember he did dots right here? So I'm going to add that. I said I wasn't going to use a um, pen that can be, that is water soluble, but I went ahead and did it because using a pencil, it was, it was feeling rough for me. I don't know why. 
I wasn't feeling it right now. And then there's these leaves. They're in the shadow, but I still want to add them. And lots of green. Another flower here, just very loose. All right, so there is my first pass. Now I'm going to use a little bit of, maybe I won't use watercolor. Maybe I'll just go right with oil pastel and just kind of do the same lines that he did. Just very, very chunky lines varying the weight maybe it's so weird for me not to um start with watercolor because that is my comfort the watercolor is like my my blanket it's so comforting to me that when I start with it it feels good but sometimes you just got to spice things up, try new things. And then you can find out, oh, I did not like that, which I'm kind of slowly finding out that maybe I do need watercolor first. But that doesn't look too bad. That's fine. You can also, if you wanted to, kind of... Um, blend everything in and then go back and add another that's the cool thing about the pet pastels you can add like other lines on top after i'm gonna do this flower here the one that looks energetic the I, I can't remember how to say it. Is it Portia? Por it's not Portia, right? Portia? Protea. Protea. Yes. Thank you. Sometimes I, I'm like, I wish I, I wish I knew how to say things better, but that's how you learn. Right? Just going to go through and add some more energetic lines. Remember, I'm keeping this paper next to me because Protea. Pro Thank you, Jessica. You guys have my back. I appreciate that. I appreciate it so much. Just trying very hard to remember to make mark making like Van Gogh and not worry too much about making it look perfect. Just adding these like energetic fluid lines, broken lines almost. And then maybe smushing some of them around and then adding different colors or different layers just to give it a different look. My hands are starting to get really, really messy, but that's part of the fun. Oh my goodness, it's 6.59. Time is flying by. We're having too much fun. Okay, I'm going to finish this one flower. So for homework, if you choose to um, follow or do it, would be to kind of do the same thing that we're doing now. Do the... Flowers inspired by Van Gogh in this style of like broken lines, maybe use markers, maybe use what, you know, whatever you have to do this kind of work. All right. Um, let's see here. Everybody doing okay? Can, do you want to show me what you have so far so that we can see? Let me see. Let me see. Okay, it's a great start. Can you believe we did three, like almost three? Whoa, Barbara, you got a lot done today. 
<laughs> That's great. Susan, that looks amazing. Ooh, Robin, the energy of those flowers. Carla, Rachel, I love it. I love all of these lines and I know you guys are going to put it together. Jessica, you start with the, that's a pastel, right? I, it looks good. Susan, I see that. Susan Murphy. Ooh, so moody. So moody. I love that. All right. Well, it is seven o'clock. I don't want to keep you. Louisa, I see that. It looks great. I don't want to keep you, but it is definitely time to go it's 701 actually but i just want to encourage you to remember to be loose to be free and don't worry too much about making things perfect just keep those lines really really um fluid and have fun with that all right um thank you so much for joining me and i really appreciate your welcome sylvia thank you it was Thank you, Joy. It was joyful. <laughs> I hope so. Um, in my page again, real quick. Oh, yeah, sure. I will show you my page. Bye. If you have to go, please go ahead. Um, Cindy, did you mean this one? Or did you mean, I don't know why my camera is weird like that. But did you mean this one? Okay. You're welcome. Yeah, mine's kind of, you know, it's a work in progress. And it's on, if you ever have cardboard around, it's great to practice on cardboard. Oh, thank you, Cindy. But yeah. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you around. Please post on our page so that I can see it. See you later. I'm going to go. Bye.